If you are looking for some easy snacks for your family that don't take a lot of time in the kitchen, I have you covered. I'm Julia. My husband and I are the candy couple. And before we get started with the treats I'm going to show you today, we would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to our channel. So today I'm going to be showing you three super easy homestead snacks that we do on our homestead and we love to eat and they're just so easy and so wholesome. One of them is going to be pretzel bites. The second is going to be um, an oatmeal bake, kind of like a kind bar, but not really. <laughs> and then the third is going to be homemade applesauce from our home canned apples. And this is so easy, especially if you're looking to reduce how many different ways you process your food. This kind of shows you, you can take anything and make a sauce and it is so good. My little one loves this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we are starting with is our pretzel bites because I need these to get started with the yeast. I am making actually a half batch of this because I'm still in my testing phase on if we can freeze it and if not. It does make a pretty big size batch whenever we make these. So a half batch is just right for our small family. I have three fourths of a cup of warm water in my bowl and I'm going to get my eighth of a teaspoon out and we are going to add to this bowl, it's got the water already in it, um, one eighth of a teaspoon of yeast and then I need to get a teaspoon out. So we're doing one and one eighth of a teaspoon of yeast. Sorry, I'm struggling a little bit. I'm doing this by myself today, if you haven't noticed. Erin's usually my, uh, my uh, partner in crime, so it's just me today. I also need to get my sugar, and we need to do a half of a tablespoon of sugar. You want to use brown sugar, you can use brown sugar. I prefer white um, organic cane sugar personally when I'm doing these things. I like this recipe because it has no rise time. I don't have a lot of extra work I have to do for it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm going to give it a quick stir just so that we can start getting that yeast to do its thing. And then I'm going to set it to the side here and let it start rising. Now, let's go ahead and make these oatmeal bars, these kind of, kind of like a kind bar. So what we're going to use is, I have about a cup, oops, and I'm throwing my lid here, I'll get that washed. I have about a cup of oats that I soaked. If you do not pre-soak your oats, your recipe is going to be a little bit different because you are going to need to take into account the fact that your oats need some liquid. Because you have pre-soaked these with a little apple cider vinegar, my oats don't need any more liquid. So what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to add about a fourth of a cup of sugar. And I'm using a cup here. I'm, I'm kind of guesstimating. It, this one doesn't have to be exact. So I'm using a fourth of a cup of sugar. I'm going to do a handful of cranberries. So these cranberries, we got them for Isabel. I'm actually going to do two handfuls. We got them for Isabel. They are very tart. They're very, very tart. Um, she's not fond of them because there's like very little sweetness to these. But we got them on an amazing price. We got that bag for $5.79. And I'm pretty sure we probably had another half off or something. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little salt. But we got a good deal. She won't eat them. She won't touch them. So I'm trying to figure out ways to get them into our food. This looks really good already. And then we'll bake this until it's done. And what I want it to do is I want it to be very thin. I don't want this to be something poofy. I want it to be thin because I want it to get kind of crisp because these are oatmeal bars. And then once it's done, what we will do is we'll put chocolate on the bottom. We'll put melted chocolate, let it rest, and it'll just be so tasty. And I don't want to put chocolate on the inside. I have found that where these take a little bit longer to bake, the chocolate doesn't really do as good that way. So I have a pre 
um, grease pan here. And I'm just going to put my stuff here into my pan and then I'm just going to let it lay flat. So I can get these as flat as possible and as smooth of a surface as I can. This has always been one of my favorite snacks whenever I would work. Um, the lady who ran the office always made sure that we had healthy things in the office to eat um, as an employee. And she would always get the kind bars that were chocolate cranberry. They were my favorite. Um, I always felt good about eating them, but they're so expensive. So expensive. They're good, but gosh, we just can't. <laughs> we, we can't, I can't stomach paying for them anymore because you're, it, it's just so high. So I'm really hoping I can find a way to have these on hand when we want them. And I'm just going to push it out. I don't want this super, super thin, but I want it thin enough to kind of have a crisp to it. And again, I did this a small batch. We're a small family. This is a lot of food for us to eat. I can't make a huge batch of this and expect to see it in time. Like, I don't know how well these would freeze. And here's what it looks like right now. We will see what a, we'll get that into our little convection oven here. You see, I've got it, I have it plugged up, ready to go. I will get it um, started. We actually run that off of our battery and that kind of helps. And I'm using that right now because it's been kind of warm. So that kind of helps a little bit. We're still waiting for yeast to do its thing. Now, apples. This applesauce is so easy. And yes, my jar siphoned a little bit. I, I had a really big issue with siphoning last year. I've never had such an issue. But the apples are still okay. Um, they're absolutely fine. Always do a scent test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some into, I have a magic bullet for this. You can use any blender, a food processor, whatever you use. I use a magic bullet. I got it specifically for this reason. It works really well for this kind of thing. It was like 40 bucks. And I'm going to put a good amount here. And I'm also going to give Isabel some of these for lunch today. Because she loves the apples just straight from the jar. Like I don't cook them or anything. She'll just eat them straight from the jar. But I love this as a way to get her a really good snack. Especially for breakfast. It's still the meal I struggle the most with for her. Sometimes she wants it. Sometimes she doesn't. It really just depends on her mood so I'll usually have some of this in the refrigerator ready to go I'll make a batch and then I just pour it into her little um, refillable squeezies and that works really well now I am going to add some of this sugar water not much but a little bit to help smooth it out and this is going to get loud so just fair warning <laughs> It is going to get a little, uh, it don't do this early. I've had a few messes trying to, trying to get ahead. So don't flip it until you're ready to actually blend it. So I'm over here, make sure you all can see. And we're just going to blend it and it takes like 30 seconds. <laughs> This is the best way to make sauces. Um, me actually making sauces is kind of crazy. See how smooth this is? And I'll try it for you all. Okay. Oh my God, it's so good. It just, it's like the creamiest, smoothest applesauce you've ever had. It is just absolutely amazing. And all I do is I just keep the lid on it, stick it in the refrigerator, and when I'm ready to make her some, I'll pull it out, fill up her container, and let it get to room temperature. It works amazing. I will put the rest of these into a container, and um, <laughs> she, she's playing with all of her toys right now, if you can hear her. But um, 
I will get this into the refrigerator and, you know, feed her off apples or make more applesauce as needed. But that's how simple it is to take just your straight canned fruit and make sauce. I, for my family, to, for me to actually make applesauce and go through that process does not make sense when it is this easy for me to make it. And this is so much more versatile for me than just plain applesauce. So, I'm going to let my yeast do its thing. We're going to get cleaned up, get this into our little oven, and we'll be right back. So, we're back. I have let my water and my yeast do its thing. It did about, um, I did about 10 15 minutes I went and did some laundry while I was waiting so now we need to add the rest of our ingredients and I need to add half of a tablespoon of oil and as you notice my uh, ninja is not on I, I thought that pan fit for some reason I thought it fit and I did not test so it's actually in my oven which is okay it's not ideal but when we make these mistakes because we assume <laughs> so I'm doing a half of a tablespoon of oil you can do butter whatever whatever your preference is I'm trying to use up all this oil so that's why I'm using oil right now I have um, a half of a teaspoon of salt in this bowl and two cups of flour so we're gonna start I'm actually gonna take this spoon out and I'm going to move to a fork. And I'm going to start with about half of this from the spoon. And then we're just going to slowly start to mix it in. And we're going to need this for about three to five minutes. And then it gets to rest for 10 to 30. And what I'll do is I'll stop this. I'll go finish my laundry <laughs> and then go back to the next set of chores. And we'll come back and we'll be able to finish this up. I will probably go ahead and start my baking soda bath. And a baking soda bath is you take a pot, fill it with water, you add your baking soda. Now, the last time I did this, the baking soda bath had too much baking soda in it. I, I, I could tell. It, it just did not taste right to me. Um, I could taste the baking soda. But it also could have been the fact that I, I didn't put it on anything to like let the liquid kind of dry off. And that was my error, so I won't be making that error this time. So, and now I'm just going to start mixing this with my hands. You might be wondering, Julia, why aren't you using your KitchenAid mixer? Well, my KitchenAid mixer won't turn. <laughs> so, I, I've not had the, uh, um, what's the, motivation. I'm so frustrated with it. It stopped turning and uh, I'm a little frustrated. So I've got to see if it's something we can fix, um, if it's worth taking to somebody to get it fixed or not. Now I'm going to go ahead and start transferring over to my little mat here. This will be where I work from now on. Let's get the rest of my flour. So I get this fully incorporated in here. I'm going to kind of dig the rest of it that's kind of stuck to the bowl off. And then we're just going to knead all this together. So I'm a talker while I knead and I hope that doesn't bother anybody. Has anybody noticed like this month has been really hard to find deals on groceries? So I was trying to get ahead on our, on our filming because we're wanting to be ahead. Um, just to help make it easier if something happens, if we're sick, if we go, go out and we can't make it back for filming or something like that. So I'm trying to get ahead and I go to look at our ads this week. There's nothing, nothing on sale this week. I was so frustrated. I was like, are you kidding me? It's like, what can I make from this? Like, most people can't cook from this, at least not in our area. Even when I looked at Aldi's online, Aldi's didn't have anything on sale. It was just, it was just kind of frustrating. All of it is like a, like a event food. Like, you have your wings and things like that. And I love a hot wing, but a hot wing for a whole week's worth of meal is not going to go very far. Because they're expensive. They're $1.99 a pound. That's our sale price. Um, 
and that's that's very high. <laughs> that's extremely high. So we were looking. I was like, I can't film this week. I mean, there's just no way. I don't have the anything to film with. I'm just kind of working this though. I know I need probably different than what you're used to, but this is kind of the way it works for me. I've just found it works a little bit better because um, I don't have the the needy muscles yet. I'm still working on those. I'm not built like a mixer, like a lot of people um, could be. I mean, a lot of people who are a lot better than me at this. So I just find that a rocky motion for me and constantly shifting just seems to form my dough better and does a little bit better on my end. But I'm just I'm really frustrated with our grocery stores right now. There's just no sales. Like I said, we're just going to form the dough. And this is one that doesn't really rise very much. It doesn't, it, it just kind of stays soft. But you get that yeasty taste to it. And it is very nice. And I'm going to make these small. Was Isabel, I'm, I'm hoping she likes them better this time. Last time she ate them, but I, again, I think it was the baking soda bath. It was just so, I could tell. Aaron couldn't tell because he thought they were what were they? He's like, I just thought you were feeding me bread till I said, no, they're pretzels. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, that's what they tasted like. But I always test on a small basis. I don't, I don't like to test recipes, especially like big batch recipes. Um, doing like a full amount, I will always try to cut it in half. And I know it takes a little bit more time because what if you do like it? You feel like you kind of wasted time, but if you don't like it, you don't waste the ingredients, especially when you're spending six fifty on flour, which is crazy, absolutely insane. But it's what we do. It's what we do to help make it better for our family. Do the things that we need to do. I can tell my dough's starting to form. It feels much better. It's starting to feel the way I need it to. Like I said, this rocky motion, I just found it works better for me on the kneading side versus, you know, constantly moving. I felt like I was having a lot of trouble getting it fully incorporated. And I feel like it's good. That's it's about where I want it to be in kneading. I'm just going to kind of get it formed to a pretty ball. And then we're just going to let it sit. It needs to sit for 10 to 30 minutes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my laundry folded and hung up. When I come back, we'll be ready to go to the next part. I am going to go ahead and get my water started to warming up on the stove. So when we're ready, we can go ahead and get this. Um, into the pot of boiling water and then into the oven. So it's been 10 minutes. I started working on my laundry, but now we're ready to roll out our pretzel bites. Have my hot water going and add some baking soda. And I am only going to do probably half of a fourth of a cup. Like I said, last time I did this, I felt like there was way too much baking soda in side of the um in the water it's gonna get bubbly and now we are going to roll this out while we're waiting for that water to boil and i have a pan here you all might not be able to see that it's got a clean towel on it um i don't use paper towels or parchment paper i'll just use a dish towel that's clean and then i have another pan so what we'll do is roll these out drop them on the clean towel and then once they've rested for a few seconds put them onto this tray. So I'm going to divide my dough into fourths. And I love my little, my little slicer here. Oh, it feels so good. And then I'm just going to roll it out into like a log. We just keep pushing and give me just a second. I will be right back. I forgot my other lot. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> um, 
I'm not used to doing this by myself, if you hadn't noticed. So I'm just gonna keep rolling this out. Like I said, I want these to be kind of smaller um, for Isabel. And I have my oven, I turned it up to 400 degrees. So we're gonna let that go. And now we're just going to come over here and make these little bitty bites from our little log. This is about what size they look until they're just teeny tiny. They almost look like gnocchi. My water is boiling, so I'm actually going to go ahead and drop these and try not to hit myself with hot water. I'm actually going to put them in my... We put them in there for 15 seconds. Sorry, and I, I do I do count. I'm a I'm a counter. I have to count, or I will make a mistake. And then we just drop them back onto our pan on our towel. And I'm just gonna roll them a little bit to try to get some of that liquid off. We're just gonna let this set while I do my next batch. Again, we're just rolling these out into a log and I did these a lot thicker last time they worked out really really well they were really good we enjoyed them um we had them with soup which was nice um and I did them off the pantry challenge so I was just using leftover flour and things like that and I'm just going to do this one a little bit more and again I'm just I'm going to come over here and get them to the size I want them. Do you all want to see more of this kind of baking for me where I bake a lot for the freezer? Um, I'm really trying to make sure I fill my freezer with a lot of really good food for us to eat. I'm going to drop these in. I can tell you I have way less of a mess because I'm using a big enough pot this time. And I'm going to go ahead and drop these into pan and then we're just going to wait for the next batch to get done which they should be now what you don't want is and you kind of can't see like see this foam you do not want to bake with that foam so it really is necessary for this to let them kind of drain off because that foam is the baking soda and it, it is going to affect how your food tastes. Um, you will taste that foam, it will bake in it and it, it's not, it's okay, it's okay. It's not unedible, but it's not <laughs> the way I want to eat it. We're gonna roll this one out. This one's a little thicker, so it might take me just a few minutes to kind of pull this one out to where I want it to be. I like to make my baking as uncomplicated as I can. And if you all have any tips, let me know. You can probably see I have my sourdough starter um, going. Um, we kind of waited till we had the good flour, but we couldn't buy during the pantry challenge. And we have that going now. It's actually doing really well. I actually bought my starter from a local Amish store. So we can start adding that into our diet. Um, really focusing on that healthier um, fermented bread. And getting that going in the discard. I'm real excited about that. But those will be like two days worth of cooking. Because sourdough is so time it, it, it can be a bit time consuming it's a bit more than i want to deal with on a day to day um so my plan is to really focus on doing sourdough see these like a little bit longer they're gonna puff up so pretty i really want to have all of my sourdough done like once every six weeks once um once a month something like that i saw somebody what they did is they had like a sourdough day like once a month, sourdough baking day. 
I thought that was brilliant. They did all their sourdough cooking and that just seems like the way to go. Kind of spread these out just a little bit. My oven is preheated and these will bake in the oven. I'm going to check them in about eight minutes, but probably about 10 minutes is how long these need to bake in the oven. We are really liking the um, homemade bagels as well. So I'm really interested to see how they are with like sourdough discard um, or even sourdough because we um we love bagels and the homemade cream cheese if you all want to see that i'm sure it's not like real cream cheese but it's like a mock cream cheese was amazing it was so good it and it's worked out so well on the bagels i've i've been very pleased with how that has been going this is my last one as you can see i did a half batch this made quite a few for us so if you're a small family, and I know a lot of homesteading families that you see on YouTube, they're not as small as, as our little family is. You don't see that often. You see much bigger, bigger families and you're seeing really big bulk cooking and I can do the bulk cooking and, I'll, and I usually do. But for us, we're just a little tiny family. And I also, it's been hard for me to learn how to cook small. It, it has been so hard for me to learn how to, you know, cook for, you know, two people and three people versus cooking for a big family. Let's get this one going. I won't lie to you, when I got these, I didn't know how much I would use them, but these have been vital tools in my kitchen because they're just so handy to have. I feel like they help so much and they keep me from tearing anything up, messing anything up, especially a smat. I love this mat for my baking. And if you all haven't noticed, I have my lovely uh, tension rod over here. So nobody's asked me what that's for. So that is what I use to dry all of these flimsy mats and things because they, they don't sit on anything at all nothing so i'm um, i'm always conscious of the fact that i need them to dry i need them to dry well because i'm i'm a bit of a obsessive clean freak at times but what we do is i just hang it across it and it dries it also works really well for my cheesecloth my bags i actually got it put up there for my breeze dryer mats but um it's worked so well for everything else too You can see this was a half batch, so a full batch would be great. You know, if you're a big family, you could do that. And you can tell it's not really taking me that long. It's been a couple of minutes for me to do these because they only take a few seconds in the water. And then you bake them, but we will salt them here in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and turn this water off. I, I will say you do get a little bit of a mess on your um on your stove from these like the baking soda it's not hard to clean i'm just going to take the edges and pat that dry and then that is ready to be washed and these are ready to salt so i've got my redmond's real salt here if you like a sea salt you can use that but we like the redmond's it works really well for us love the taste of it it doesn't taste like any other salt you use i'm going to get these in my oven and again they're going to go for about eight minutes now let's grab my other pan over here kind of wipe off a bit i've got flour and that's okay it's an easy easy clean Trying to be careful not to burn my hands off here. As you see. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Here we go. And I'm actually, since my oven is on, I'm going to use my oven to help me melt if it's not hot enough. And I don't think it is, but I'll pop this in for a minute. And then it'll be ready. 
um, to go, but it will only take just like a few minutes for this to actually melt. And I'm just gonna put the, a good, you know, cup of uh, chocolate chips on top of here. I, I can't wait. This is, I'm excited. This, like I said, this is one of my absolute 100% favorite ways to eat oatmeal is in like one of these types of bars. And this looks and smells amazing. So once this melts and I can like spread this out in a thin layer because it's so good. And I want a lot of chocolate on this. I don't, I don't want to be stingy with my chocolate. So I'm going to pop this in the oven for a minute, let it heat up and get melty. And then when we come back, everything's going to be done and I will taste this the rest of this for you. So we are back. I'm ready to taste test the last two items for you. We have the applesauce, which I already tasted. It was so good, amazing. And these are the little pretzel bites and they're just perfectly soft on the inside. And um, I'll go ahead and try one here. Those are good. Baking soda bath was just right. Perfect on the inside, really nice and doughy. Could have used a little bit more salt. I was a little bit worried. I didn't want to do over salt them, but those are very good. They have a nice crunch on the outside. You can tell they got really nice and pretty and brown. You can see another one here. And I am going to actually put some of these in the freezer to see how they do when we freeze them. So if I decide that I want to make big batches of these. I can put them in the freezer, pull them out when we're ready for them in like individual packets. And then here is the beautiful little bar. It's very thin, but it's just right. So you don't have too much. And um, I'm really excited about this. It's a little messy because the chocolate's not completely done on it, but that's okay. I'm kind of cool with melted chocolate. And I will say throwing it back in the oven for two minutes was perfect. I mean, it worked just so well. It was so much easier than uh, trying to melt chocolate and put it on top. That's good. I wish I wish Erin could try these for you because it's like I said, it's a little messy right now. That is very good. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a go-to. That one's so good. So I hope these inspired you, made you think outside the box, and we would really appreciate if you checked out our link tree with all of our other content on it. And we'll keep continuing to make these videos. And you tell me what you want to see. What do you want to see me do in the kitchen? Do you want to see big bulk cooking? Um, I do do a lot of that. I'm happy to share that with you. Just let me know in the comments below, or you can email me at thecandycouple at yahoo.com. And as always, thank you for joining us on The Candy Couple, where we work hard, live simple, and enjoy life. Have a wonderful day.